Hello everyone, thank you for being here today. This video, um, all about Patrick Ta, the Patrick Ta brand. Over the past year or so, I've become really familiar with the eyeshadow palettes and the blushes from his line, and recently I've been inspired to try more. And let me tell you why. Okay, I gotta give you a little story here, a little background. On TikTok, in case some of you don't watch, I know some of you have said, I don't watch TikTok. Well, there's somebody on there, her name is Alex Earl, A-L-I-X, and she is a college student at the University of Miami and guys she's living her best life she is partying all the time she is gorgeous Barbie doll vibes has a massive mega following on TikTok her claim to fame there is kind of like get ready with me storytelling type stuff she does great looks as she's just sitting there like talking about life and I think the special thing about Alex is she does have a realness to her as like perfect as her body and her face and everything looks. She'll be real with you that it looks like she's living in a dirty frat house, you know? It's honestly kind of a mess. She'll show the broken toilet. She'll show this and that. I think in one video she even said, like, she doesn't mind having a bunch of clothes sitting on her bed all the time because when she sleeps it feels kind of like a weighted blanket. <laughs> like, I mean, she'll say stuff like that. It just, it's sort of refreshing. I think some of that is probably how she's grabbed a lot of people and really just become this fascinating character. And I know she's gone on, like, like the big tart trip and there are all those big influencer things you know that happen we're seeing a really big extravagant event or trip or something where that brand is hosting and they're trying to make a big deal of it okay in walks Patrick Ta now. I don't know how this all got arranged. It could have been as simple as him DMing her or emailing her and saying, hey, can I come over? Because that's exactly what he did. He came into her environment and just was like doing her makeup. Like one fine day you're scrolling TikTok and there's her in her normal space with nothing special and him like just doing some makeup on her. And guys, the moment I saw this happen, I thought, yes, exactly. If a brand wants to buddy up to an influencer, come into their house, you know? Do something like this that feels so real and not put on. I think she said she cleaned, but then like there was literally her underwear under the table on the floor. <laughs> like it's just, it's just funny. And then there's girls in the background, like roommates are kind of coming in in the background, just sort of watching. It's not like there was some special perfect camera shot for everybody. It just seemed so real. I mean, obviously this celebrity makeup artist who was just seen doing Gigi Hadid on his channel is coming in here and that's not normal, but my gosh, did it seem like such a fun, easy, natural environment. And I think part of it was his personality just kind of worked with things. But like you got these girls and they're just kind of streaming and just like watching in the background and everybody's having fun. And that made me want to buy Patrick Ta. Now, did Alex look gorgeous with whatever he did to her? Yes, undeniably. She always looks good, but she probably looked even better after his makeup. But was I like sitting there taking notes? What did he use? What did he use? What do I need? Blah, blah, blah. No, and I don't often feel that way when I watch things, but what inspired me to want to buy some Patrick Ta was the fact that I just enjoyed that entire interaction. And I thought it was extremely refreshing to see brands sort of get off their high horse and instead come get into the mix there. And maybe it wouldn't have worked with just anyone, but with Patrick, it really did. Like it flowed and it was fun. And did anybody else just think that it was absolutely a brilliant idea on his part? And it just played off really well with how natural she is. Like she was not trying to make life perfect. It was more like, you know, unapologetically, here's our college house, come on in. I mean, a part of me wanted to see a vlog later of him going out partying with them. And really I come from the school of, I don't like brands intervening so much in the space that we're in. I've obviously created a thing for myself over the past 15 years where I feel very independent from the brands. Like the brands are over here, I'm over here. They're not like fooling with what I'm gonna say about things. I don't really like to be in cahoots with anybody, but I guess that's just not what this felt like. It was brilliant on Patrick Todd's part because obviously he's buddying up to a person who is getting like boatloads of views on TikTok, but also the way it was played off, it was like, nothing special 
was done. He came into her space. It just made everything seem 10 times more relatable. Um, I'll have to link to the little video below and you can kind of see what's going on here. But it just, it was fun, it was funny, and it made me want to try more of a brand that I was only somewhat familiar with. So that's my really long backstory. What I ended up getting, guys, that I didn't already have, I got the foundation palette. It's the cream and powder foundation compact. I got a bronzing compact, and I even got a couple of the brushes. I splurged on that. So we're gonna go there right now. My skin is all prepped and my Patrick Ta stuff came in the mail just like a few days ago and I've been playing with it a little bit but yeah I still feel like I'm kind of in try it out mode with some of this. This is a cream foundation and finishing powder duo. I got it in light four. It was kind of hard to decide what shade I might be, but this actually does work pretty well. This double-ended brush has the buffing end for your cream foundation and then like a powder end for the powder. And instead of going straight into this today, like I did before, I'm actually going to swipe it on as though it's foundation being squeezed out of a tube a little bit more, you know? Because I sometimes feel like I get lost in the application when I'm going straight into the pan. I lose sight of how much I'm getting on because it does blend in pretty easily and seamlessly. And I feel like I maybe over applied a lot the first time. So I'm getting that all swiped on. Got your little window, love that. Brand's doing windows, you know? It's cool. So I got this soft brush. It's not huge but it certainly does get the job done. And I end up having like a medium coverage out of this. Having some little breakouts on my chin. I think it's hormonal due to that time of the month. I don't usually have a big issue with that, but the chin is not in great shape. Oh, and last night, I'm experimenting with different heatless curling options that I can do in the night. A few weeks ago before a cheerleading competition, I did the kind that looks like the rod that goes over your head like a rainbow and you wrap your hair around it and secure it at the end with scrunchies. And that actually did pretty well, even though I felt like it was coming sort of loose from my hair. And last night I did something called pillow rollers and there were six of them and you wrap some hair around and then you kind of like snap each one into the other. And I've got like a little barely there wave. And then I've got a couple of completely straight <laughs> parts in my hair. I did get a little volume at the root. Now it's clipped back, but it was not as good as the rod method for me. And I still got a couple other ways I want to test out. Okay, so we've got that blended in. Really natural seeming coverage. I feel like maybe I want a little bit more on the nose. I've heard really mixed reviews on this product from Patrick Ta, but I will say it wore pretty well on me just yesterday. I did make sure to set it really well. And before I go into that powder, I am actually gonna grab out a concealer. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Patrick Ta has a concealer yet. I'm gonna use this Born This Way Ethereal Light in the shade Oatmeal. Apply some of that for some brightness around the eyes. I'm not really trying to imitate an Alex Earl look, although I have considered it at times, like some of the different products she uses, what some dupes might be. I've, I've thought about that. But now I just take my little e.l.f. duo complexion. We let that small side spread and then we just buff it in with the larger side. To me, the charm of Alex Earl is Yes, she's gorgeous and everything, but she has an element of realness to her, um, a humanness. Uh, I think so much of what we see online is people like trying to show off, oh, this is my perfect kitchen and this is my blah, blah, blah. And yeah, she's a college student. And I think everybody kind of gets and accepts that, but she doesn't even try to come off like she's got it all together. And I think that's what's just like very refreshing to see. I'm really enjoying the look now that I've got some concealer on there. It just feels a little more complete in the areas where I want to be brighter, lifted. It's working. Going back to my little face palette, which by the way, this stuff just gets crazy and prints, fingerprints all over it. I'm going to first take my powder puff into that. And I'm going to like really deliberately set my under eye and T-zone with this powder. By the way, what does the powder feel like? Um, pretty soft. It doesn't seem like it's the type of thing that's trying to have any powder foundation-like coverage, but yeah, it's it's smooth. I thought it looked really good going on yesterday on top of everything, and I think it's an innovative combo to put, you know, the powder and the cream side by side, but I don't know if people are expecting more coverage out of it. I've heard a lot of complaints about staying power, and I think it's going to take a little bit more use for me, but I have liked it so far. 
the brush I do not think was essential for me. Like I've got plenty of things that can do what this does, Morphe under eye bullet brush, plenty of things that can buff, elf brush. It was expensive and I think I could have tried this and just used it alongside other things that I already have. I'm not sure why I felt compelled to get the brush. And now we're going to move on to the other new thing that I got which is the She's Sculpted Cream Contour and Powder Bronze Duo. So yeah, She's Sculpted is the shade name. And this was what I remember was being used on Alex. Another thing that I wanted to get that he was using that's sold out on Sephora right now is like kind of a body balm sort of thing. I think it was called like She's on Vacation. And he just like slathered it on her body and it looked so pretty. It wasn't just glowiness, but it had a bronzy vibe too. Will it look different on a college girl attending University of Miami versus Mom of Three in Southern Illinois? Might might look a little different once it's put on, but I wasn't able to get my hands on that one yet. This was the brush I was really intrigued about, this one for the contour. Look at this little, it's like a micro fan brush. It's, I don't have anything like this. It's stiff and that's gonna carry your cream product. And then this fluffy side for the powder bronzer. So two step process here. We're gonna go into that cream with our shorter side, straight in, and see what we get. See if we like the tone. I mean, it blended out beautifully for me yesterday and I just, I, I love the, the stiffness of this brush. The shape of the brush really makes it contour. Like the contour is contouring. The contour is going for it. More so than with a, a rounded or oval brush, you know? It is attacking that cheekbone. Like you're gonna be chiseled. I will say another thing though, guys, I'm doing great about my no night snacking. Not eating after dinner, period. Do you know how much I wanna be snacking on the couch? So much, but I'm not. I'm thinking, I've got like a full slate of the yummy things I wanna do when it's like Saturday and I'm gonna let myself do whatever I want. I've got all these things planned. I saw something about making a big oatmeal cookie in the air fryer. <laughs> like, yes, I will be doing that. I will not be doing that tonight, but I'll do it then. But it helps a lot because Bub's with me on this. It's 10 times easier when the person who's sitting beside you is also abiding by that because then you don't want to, you, you have some accountability, I guess. Okay, so this is going on without any like major whoosh of crazy color, but yet we're contoured. It's plenty dark enough, like it is doing some work, but it's going on so naturally. This side needs a little bit more. Maybe I just, yeah, you do kind of have to deliberately feel your brush having that resistance against the product. See that? Now we really got something going on over here. Oh, I love that brush. That was a brush worth getting, I think. And they sold one that I believe was just this end but it wasn't that much more expensive to get the double-ended. But I understand why some people don't want the double-ended. I have a little tray where I keep double-ended brushes so it's handy for me because so many of them are like fixtures of my collection. But there's that. Okay, now let's go in and do some powder. And does this powder have a slight satin finish? I think so. And so I go into the fuller end and we're gonna top off and look all bronze goddess. Oh, I like that. Into this. Um, I think the effect could be created with lower cost products because, you know, essentially cream layered with powder, you know, we could do this with multiple purchases from a drugstore product. But do I feel like a kind of a luxury goddess using this fancy little smudge covered compact in my double ended expensive brush? It feels fancy. Somebody told me in a comment that I was the least extra online personality. I don't think, I know if they called me an influencer, but least extra person ever. I don't know whether to be like, aw, or huh? As one in the beauty space, I probably should be a little extra. I mean, I do do my makeup every single day in a room full of makeup. I'll DIY my nails, obviously they're, they're undone right now and my mom cuts my hair. When I tan, I self tan. I don't know, ask anyone in this house and they'd probably say, oh, she's extra, who knows. But by the way, in case you were wondering, the face compact is a little bit bigger than the bronzer compact. Both equally covered in fingerprints. Okay, we're gonna move on to the blush. 
I have had a blush palette from Patrick Ta for a while. I think I got this even before I ever got into the eyeshadow palettes. And I love it because what he did here was he put in actual shades that are being sold individually. There's She's a Doll, a lot of people love that one. This middle one is She's Vibrant, and then this one is She's Baked. And I have loved and used all three of these. But it was only recently that I realized you're actually supposed to do powder first with cream over top. I know. Logic told me, and just the way other people talk about it, the way I'd been taught, I feel, through other products and people, was that, you know, you can set creams with powders and you have good staying power, and you do. But I think Patrick's mindset is more in the name of making it look fresh and just being a really beautiful finish on the skin. I think that's what he's about there. So we're going to use She's a Doll, and we're going to go powder first. And I saw him just in a video by himself on a TikTok or maybe an Instagram reel. I don't know where I saw it, but the process was being shown. So there's that pretty powder blush, just slaying it on its own. I love the tones in here. I don't think this particular palette is still being sold, but it seems like the kind of thing that would do great if he put it out again, you know? More recently, they put out the palette that has the two blush combos and a highlighter. And I didn't love this one so much and I've talked about this in a video before but you got the blushes and then kind of a transparent creamy gel highlighter and a powder highlighter. It's not bad but this is where it's at okay and then I'm gonna take my elf domed stipple with this cream and we're gonna go over top with the cream and we'll be able to see on one cheek what the difference is you know it looks like it's catching the light a little bit more. This does have just a flatness to it because these are matte, you know, these are matte, just full colored powder blushes. But when you put that cream on top, it really is pretty and it doesn't interfere. We know we can put creams on top of powders. I mean, we've known this for a long time. So many people are setting makeup and then putting a cream blush or a cream contour on top. It doesn't matter as long as your application is gentle. Like, yep, yeah, uh, I'm getting the appeal. That is fresh. Okay. If I were to go get one of these blushes, like buy an individual, this has been probably my most used, but also I love She's Baked as well. That's really pretty. I'm even thinking about using a little bit of that cream on my lips because all I have lip-wise from Patrick Ta is this lip plumper. Since I feel like I've been talking a long, long time already. I'm going to go ahead and do my brows. Don't have any Patrick Ta for that and I'll be right back. It's the combo of L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer and the Hard Candy Teddy Brow. I'm putting Milani eyeshadow primer on. And I was just thinking as I was doing my brows, maybe Patrick would come to my house in, you know, just that impromptu kind of mode and just like do some makeup. We play with some kids. Here's your invite, Patrick. So I have the two eyeshadow palettes that he's put out. I really love the rosy one, the Major Dimension 2. Um, that was the first one I got, and I just love the tones in there. I feel like I've used the one less. Um, this I got around Christmas time. So I'm wanting to do a look with this one today. We do have that window with the two cream shades under it. We've got a row of some shimmers, varying intensities, and a row of mattes at the bottom. Um, really nice quality on both of these palettes. Um, I enjoy using them. I think they're just fun to use. It's fun to use the neutrals, but have those kind of exciting finishes in there as well. Um, I'm going to go straight to the middle of the bottom row to this shade. Just plug that into the crease right off the bat. I would love to know, like, if you've tried his eyeshadow palettes, which one do you have? Which did you get first? Which do you prefer if you have them both? It's so funny, my mentality on makeup versus like spending money on clothes. I'd be much, I'm going to this lightest shade here, which actually does have a little glimmer to it. I'd be much quicker to spend the amount of money I spend on this palette over like a shirt or some jeans or something. I'm just way more into makeup and maybe it's like a season of my life kind of thing where I know I'm in the more casual stuff most of the time, but maybe in spring I start wearing more dresses. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Uh, let's go into this shade right here, this kind of rusty brown. Really like the looks of that. The shades blend so nicely. Oh, I picked up a fuzzy on my brush. It's so fun to blend nice mattes. 
I'm gonna take one of these creams just with my finger. I'm gonna take the darker of the two. And I kind of like, this is the way I like using the other one as well. Taking some of that as like a dark little corner. You could also maybe smudge these under the eye. You could try to use them more like a liner. But I like working it into the outside and then it gives whatever shadow I put on top even more like punch in that outer corner. Flat brush going into my darkest matte here. I feel like every time I hold this palette, it's so hard to get a read on the shades given the metallic background, but I'm going right next to that last one I put in the crease and I'm going here. And I'm just gonna build that up on the outside and just the intensity is so pretty when you're topping off that cream. Look at that, uh, that richness. I mean, oh, there are times where I just fall back in love with a brown eye, and this is one of them. Now I'm wanting to take a small brush, same shade, really get right in there to the crease, and make sure that shade is kind of just radiating out just a little bit, okay? Same dark color. Oh, the gradients in these palettes is what makes them so user-friendly and so fun and satisfying. Did I feel like I worked hard to get here? Not a bit, okay? See that? Ooh, it's toasty, it's fun. Persona double-ended, which gives us a lot of fluff. And let's go to this middle shade. This was, wasn't that where we started in the crease? And just kind of put a little bit of that back into the mix now. An easy look from this palette. It's setting it up with the mattes. You can use a cream to intensify, or you can not use a cream and it'll still be really pretty. And then layer on a shimmer and you're good. Let's do a little t intensity under the eye while I've got this brush. Going straight in with the apply side to the dark brown. Outer corner. And look a little smoky. And then I think I'll take a little less intense shade and work the rest of the way inward. Clean it off. Let's go to this shade right up here. It has like a soft shimmer, whereas everything else in the top row has a really dazzling shimmer. This one's also kind of like a smoother shimmer, but this one right in the middle, you know, she's soft. And just kind of let that carry the rest of the way in. See that? Whoop, whoop. Real easy. Looks so pretty just as is, and we've left it bare right there, but we're gonna go in. We're going in. I love a little controlled flat brush for this, so I use my small, what I call my small flat pointed brush from Morphe. I think they named that the Pointed Packer. Get all the pink and purple off of it from previous days. And I'm gonna go into this bronze right here. Pick some of that up, and we're just gonna swipe. I do kind of a swiping motion. I feel like it transfers best down onto the lid when we swipe certain shades. Just a teeny bit of shiftiness in there. Maybe not super pink, but I'm compelled to bring in the finger. It's hard to stop me from doing that with colors like this. But the great thing, guys, one of the biggest strengths of the Patrick Ta palettes is when you go in with these shimmers using Milani eyeshadow primer underneath, they don't move. I don't go my whole day finding these microfine sparkles all over my cheeks. I just don't. It's part of that maybe me not over applying it, like knowing when to quit, that might be part of it because if you just keep building and building and building eventually, like we say, it's not sticking to anything. But I mean, you want to talk about glam and fun and light catching. Yeah, I'm in full light right here, obviously. But if I wasn't, that would still act like kind of a spotlight shade, okay? Really fun. Maybe take some of this pearliness right here. Hit that inner corner with some of that bling. These palettes are fun for people who love neutrals, okay? Neutrals can be fun. Patrick Ta palettes make it fun. I'm still wanting to take just a little bit of darkness. Like, I want to feel a really nice blend in between the shimmer and the matte. And I think this brown shimmer right up here is going to be perfect for that. Just patting it over that seam. Yeah, that merges it a little more sensibly. Oh, yes. 
That's what the doctor ordered for that. Another interesting thing about me is that, yes, I do own a Patrick Tom mascara. It's not my most favorite, um, and I've had it around a long time, kind of. Um, but, like, it's still got juice in it, and I used it recently and had no adverse effects, so I think it's safe to use. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that on my upper lashes. I kind of forgot I got this, the Major Volume Mascara. It's pretty. Same finish as all the other products. Brush has like natural bristles and a couple of sides that don't have as many bristles, but then here and here they do, or it does. It kind of does help you lay some down and then carry it through, but guys, as we've seen from recent drugstore mascaras on this channel, the Relove by Revolution, the one I just used from Hard Candy, you do not need to splurge on mascaras at all. Like, I'm using what I got, but I don't see me splurging on another mascara for a long time. But we can build with this. We can get nice length and volume. It's not a bad mascara. I'm just saying. Spend your money on a Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette or a blush duo, but don't feel like you absolutely must spend that kind of money on a mascara. Especially when, you know, with regular use, you will go through it fairly fast, any mascara that you're consistently using day in and day out. Building nice length. I'm gonna hop over to the other eye. Um, I'm gonna use Cali Raycom Hell or High Water on the lower lashes just because I know it's not gonna smudge. We talk about that all the time. And then, yeah, we're gonna craft a little lip. Um, this lip plumper that I have from him, the Major Volume Plumping Gloss, I have it in the shade 2CC's, I believe. And I do like the, like, cinnamon hearts kind of smell. Instead of being minty, it's very cinnamony, and I do enjoy that. Um, but it looks very transparent on my lips, so I want to give my lips a little color from one of the cream blushes, because I don't have like a Patrick Ta lip liner or lipstick or anything like that. Does he even make lipstick? I'm not certain. But we're going to create our own little lip shade from this line. And I think I'm still coming away feeling like you know, the most exceptional things from his brand, I still feel, are the blushes, the duo blush process, and the eyeshadow palettes. And I guess I would add that bronzer contour that had both the powder and the cream. I really enjoyed that. With that certain brush, it was phenomenal. Patrick Ta is doing something in his line where he's fusing ease and practicality with some really fun and beautiful products. In the name of Alex Earl, I am going to do light liner in the lower inner rim. It would be offensive to talk about her so much in this video and not do that. <laughs> I'm going to do some Cali Ray, come hell or high water. If Patrick Ta made this mascara, he could call it She Doesn't Move. You know, because everything's she's something. She stays put. Okay guys, so the mascara's all done. And for lips, I'm gonna go into the cream part of She's Baked, right? Yeah. And this is gonna look kind of like Dusty Rose on the lips. It's gonna give us a little base color before I add on that gloss, okay? It's actually gonna make the looks, lips look really pillowy and soft, I like it. Then we go in with this which again has that, ooh, just cinnamon candy scent. It has a texture that appears to be filling in every line and just shining like none other. Juicy, juicy. I like that product, but I don't feel like it's an absolute necessity. Okay, take down my hair from the somewhat failed pillow roller experiment. What do we need more of here? I would do a hair more blush and I'm actually gonna go into She's Baked. Just a little bit more of that. Love it. Then I'm going to use the face compact and go down to the powder and that little brush that I bought that I didn't feel was super essential. And this is where, you know, I like to go th over that seam between under eye and top of the blush. Maybe we'll hit T-zone again a little bit. Mm. Very soft. I gotta say, the complexion looks great. I love the eye. And I really just have a lot of fun applying those blushes. He did some gorgeous ones. And I mean, I was really only truly able to show you one today. But if you've seen some past videos of me with that palette, you've seen the others too. But yeah, eyeshadow still reigns supreme. And that contour is a new thing that I think I'm really gonna enjoy. So thank you guys for your time today. Thanks for hearing my whole backstory on why I did this. Patrick, you are invited to come into my little spot here anytime. <laughs> 
and thank you all so much for watching today. I love you. I'll see you again soon. Bye.